Hi, so continuing with problem solving, our next part is proportion and rates. And we always remember the first time we got pulled over by a, speed, by a cop for speeding, right? Like it's, how fast were you going? So we wanna look at a rate, which is a, uh, essentially a fraction with two quantities and two different units. Um, and we always say like miles per hour, right? We say, well, I went, you know, 68 miles per hour, or 68 MPH or MPGs or something like that. Um, that's a rate, right? Because there's two different quantities in the same number. So um, we have to think about when we were asked, you know, uh, how fast were you going? You didn't say 25. You didn't say 25 hours. And you didn't say 25 miles, right? You said, oh, okay, 25 miles per hour, right? So there's that language in there that we really want to scrutinize right now. So let's just say I said 25 miles per hour. Let's focus on the word per for a second. What does per mean, right? Well, we just learned from percent, right? It said parts per hundred percent, right? Um, that, and then remember parts per hundred was a, ended up being a fraction, right? The part over the whole. So this word per actually represents in math a fraction bar. So this is a fraction bar. So now let's rewrite it. Let's rewrite 25 miles per would be, be the fraction bar hour. So now I've rewritten this fraction. Notice now this is a rate because it is a fraction of two quantities with different units, a fraction with a quantity and two different units. Okay, so the unit rate here is just uh, essentially the rate we see in Costco when we look at prices per unit, you know, like they just give you this long decimal. Well, that's because it's just a dollar amount per one, right? Per dollar, you're getting it is 0 0.0002 cents per, you know, per paper towel or something, right? So it's just a unit rate. And essentially what it means is the denominator is one. So in this case, 25 miles per hour, notice there's 25 miles on top and per hour. So we don't always write it, but we know it's there. There's like this per one hour. I can go 20, I can drive 25 miles in one hour. So that means in two hours, I could go 50 miles, right? So essentially when the denominator is one, that's going to be the unit rate. So let's look at this example. Your car can drive 338 miles on a tank of 26 gallons. Express this relationship as a rate. So it doesn't tell us how to make this rate, right? We could essentially do, we have one of two choices. We could do the miles per gallon, MPGs, as we usually see, right? Or gallons per mile. Like how many gallons do I need per mile, right? So it's just up to you. Um, we're going to go ahead and do miles per gallon just because that's what we're used to in the world. Like when we go buy a car, it says MPGs, like it tells you the MPGs and that's usually how it shows it. Okay, so if we go 338 miles per 26 gallons of gas, now I see this word per and I can see that I'm going 338 miles per, right, so I'll highlight that yellow, 26 gallons. But we don't usually see the rates like this. This is the rate, and we should reduce the rate as we possibly can because we don't see when we go by a car and we look at the sticker it doesn't say three three eight miles per 26 gallons right it just says miles per gallon so let's go ahead and get the unit rate so even though this is the this is a rate in the real world we're looking for the unit rate it's just the way we function in our in our stores and an economy so the unit rate would just literally be going to the calculator and putting in 338 
divided by 26 and just getting whatever number pops out. So 13, perfect. So this means that 338 divided by 26 is 13. So this means we have 13 miles per gallon or 13 MPGs, right, how you write it. 13 miles per gallon. So for every gallon, you're going 13 miles. Not bad, right? You're like, okay, I can do that. Well, well then what? how do we take this one step further? Well, we take these rates and construct proportions so we can find maybe a missing parameter. So proportions are um, equations that is equivalent of two rates or ratios. So um, this is just one, this is just a reminder. Again, I told you there's only a few times in this class where I don't have use algebra and X and this is one of the few times. So we could really count on one hand by the end of the uh, the end of the class of like how many times we're going to see the variable X because we, re we really aren't. <clears throat> so here's the first encounter with X. So how do we solve proportions? Well, if we have um, a fraction on one side of the equal sign and another fraction on the other, we can easily just cross multiply. And what it says, it says that you can have multiply 17 and X, right? diagonal and that should be equal to keep the equal sign 3 times 85. So this means that x is equal to if I divide each side by 17 I would get x equal to 3 times 85 divided by 17. Now I know you're used to doing every little problem you know, step. We don't really have to because we have the calculator and the calculator will do most of the work for us. Because again, that's how we would do it in the store or at the car lot or the, you know, anywhere. Okay, so this is going to be 15. So therefore X is equal to 15. So all you're going to do is cross multiply, right? and then solve for x. So let's take proportions because this is where I, I am a huge cook. I aspire to be a chef one day. And um, I always use this when I'm making recipes because I'm always trying to figure out um, like pancakes. I don't want to make 12, a dozen pancakes in my recipe. I only want to make like two like for my son. So how do I get only two pancakes out of this, right? So proportions is a big way of how we do that. So if we here, we have a crepe, crepe recipe, sorry, crepe recipe. And the crepe recipe calls for two eggs, one cup of flour, one milk, one cup of milk. How much flour would you need if you use five eggs? So if you want to like, let's say your eggs are expiring, that's when we tend to like want to use up the food, right? So let's say I have five eggs. Let me make a bunch of crepes and then I'll just keep them for later, right? So if I want to know how much flour I need for five eggs, then I'm going to use the flour and eggs from the recipe. So the milk kind of is an extra thing. So, but that's okay. They were just giving us the recipe. So I'll just like cross that out for now. So how do we construct these proportions, especially if they have units attached to them? Well, there's two ways you can do it. We'll do it both ways. I'll do the first way. And the first way would mean keeping recipe with recipe. So we have recipe one and then recipe equal to recipe two. So the first rep re recipe says you have two eggs per one cup of flour equal to recipe two, which is five eggs per, and then I don't know how many cups of flour, right? So you could say X here. Um, I put little c here for the word cup. Um, we don't really need units when we're setting up the proportions because they all reduce out and work out in the end. Um, and we're left with cups. So um, when I do the cross multiplying, I'm going to go ahead and take out all the units and in the end use cups because we really just need the arithmetic part to get the number of cups with five eggs. So here, um, 
I'm going to cross multiply. So I get 2, two times x equal to 1 times 5. So then if I divide each side by 2, I get x equals 5 halves. But we really don't say that in recipes, right? We don't say 5 halves cups of flour, right? So we say 2 and a half cups, right? So we would say we need 2 and a half cups of flour. And see, these can be really simple, especially if we go and use it in the calculator. Oops, not that big. <laughs> Okay, the second way is to keep uh, ingredients with ingredients. Ingredients 1 equal to ingredients 2. Meaning units with units, right? So in this case, if I have ingredient 1, let's say, is eggs, then I keep eggs with eggs. So here I would put 2 eggs per, uh, per 5 eggs equal to, and then ingredient we're looking for is flour. So then two eggs had one cup of flour per, and then I don't know how many cups of flour. So here we keep units with units, but the kicker is this is recipe with recipe. Whereas notice here, your units are across and your recipes are down. So here's the recipe. So it just depends how you want to coordinate it. But either way, just keep recipe with recipe, units with units, and it'll all work out. But there's this; these are the two ways we could essentially do it. Because when we cross multiply, notice you still get 2x equal to 5 and x equals 5 halves which is two and a half cups of flour. So no matter which way you do it, um, essentially all you're doing is keeping category with category or units with units. Otherwise, it goes units, units, category, or units, units, category. So it's just really up to you. Um, and if you learned it one way or the other, just keep it that way because we really were just doing, all we're trying to do is see how much flour we need to make yummy crepes, right? So... <laughs>